Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, we are gonna have some fun today. Gonna be trying out a new catfish rig. Well, at least a new variation on a rig and see if we can get some fish on it. So let me show you what I'm gonna be doing. So today I'm gonna be dragging, and my regular viewers, you've seen me drag before. I've got my dragging sinkers here on a three-way swivel. You wanna learn how to make these, there's a link down in the video description. Very simple, cheap, easy to make. They pull through cover very well, but I've got my leader coming off here this is 80 pound monofilament down to float and rattle a few inches above my hook like normal but off the tag end of my hook i've got one of these catfish sumo bait stalker flies and so as i'm pulling my cut bait along dragging along bottom this fly is going to be swimming along behind it and i've been using those flies for a couple years now on my suspending rigs and caught a ton of extra catfish both blues and flatheads on them but i've been hesitant to try them on a dragging rig because that exposed hook there on that fly dangling behind that bait i feel like it's gonna be snag city and it may very well be total experiment today could go bad but spoiler alert if you're seeing this at least something went right or else the video would have never got posted right so we're going to try it today I'm, i've launched my kayak here in this creek and my plan is i'm going to drag my way all the way out of this creek we get out to the mouth of it if i see some fish out there i may just suspend baits a little while out there but i really want to focus on dragging to try out and see will these rigs pull through cover okay without getting snagged will we catch some extra fish on the flies too I'm excited, y'all. Trying out something new, it's fun. So come with me today, y'all. Let's see what happens. So here's our first bait going out. That's a skipjack chunk. I'm gonna have it on the right side of the kayak. We'll just start letting out some line on that rod while we get our other one rigged up here. This other rig is the exact same. The only difference is we're gonna have a skipjack head on this one. I'm just gonna be running two rods here this morning at least to start if we get on some fish out there at the creek mouth and we're suspending baits i may switch over a couple rods so we can put out some more but we got plenty of bait we got plenty of time this morning weather is nice so by gosh it's a good day y'all let's catch some fish oh here we go man here we go oh man here we go we're hooked up first fish it don't feel too bad either. That's on the, the head bait. I have been trolling for probably, I've had my speed set at a half a mile an hour. And I've probably been moving along, I don't know, somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour. Yeah, he's pulling, buddy. But this is the first anything, no taps nothing I've, I've had the live scope on as i've moved along looking in front of me i brought a, a jig rod with me because i thought if we if we saw some fish in front of us that were up in the water column as we trolled along here i'd throw that jig at them but i just ain't i ain't seeing nothing not to this point anyway in the creek right now we're 30 feet deep so we still got this is a long creek we got a ways to go to get out of it and fish could be literally anywhere up in through here. Once they move into these creeks, they're, they're prone to go anywhere. They could be on chasing bait schools, brush piles, up along the shoreline. They could be over here on the other side behind me on these docks. I mean, you just, you just never know what they're gonna do. They're in here to feed. We've hooked into one right here though, by gosh. Fish number one getting us a skunk out. Curious to see, is he going to be on the head bait or the fly? If nothing else, the, so far the flies ain't got hung up. So that's definitely encouraging. Yep, okay, I see him, he's blue. Yeah, he's got the head. All right. All right, folks, fish number one here. That's a good start. I'll take it, man. Some days you never get rid of the skunk. We have today here, less than an hour into the trip. Get this jig rod out of the way here. Get it moved so we can land this thing. We don't want this fish breaking that pole, do we? No, don't you, don't you roll now. You're gonna calm it down, mister. 
we're gonna calm it down one time. Left our head bait on. Eh, it looks okay. We'll probably just throw it back out there in a minute. I don't know that this fish is big enough to justify front camera time, but since he's the first one on our experimental rig day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm feeling generous today, y'all. Do you feel lucky, fish? He said he just got a hooked in a, in a jaw and got reeled up from the creek bottom here. He don't feel lucky at all. Well, get out of here then, you ungrateful thing. I boosted that fish's Instagram following by at least three people. He don't give a crap. Ungrateful. But I'm grateful to get him. And I'm especially grateful that these rigs have made it this far and not got hung up. I was very concerned, but that's what's, that's really, that's what's kept me from doing this before because i mean i've had the thought for a long time i just I'm like ah it's gonna get snagged up all the time and you just it's problems waiting to happen but so far so good i'll look at this head bait again I, it looks okay i i kind of still want to change that let me just i'll tell you what let's put it back out there for a little while no let's change it out i i want yeah, let's change it out. I'm indecisive. I, we're in that in between. If I if I didn't have much bait, I'd leave it out there and we'd probably catch more fish on it. But I do have bait, so there's no point in being conservative. So it's just my nature. Well, let's switch this out. We'll put another one on and uh, get back to it, y'all. Fish number one, man. Oh man, we got this rod going down now. Oh, the chunk's going down. I was about to put this new head bait on and get it out. Oh, that one come off. Or did he? No, he's coming at me is what he was doing. He was coming right at me. I thought he'd come off. That silly fish tried to pull one on me, man. Well, we've apparently, I didn't never see him on the screen. We've apparently come through some fish. Because we get that other blue and before I can get my other bait on and drop it down we done hooked up with another one as bass boat goes by fortunately i don't think he cares about what we're fishing for he probably marked a gps waypoint there for his that one cat fishing friend he has though <laughs> you know how it is people see you reeling in a fish they're gonna they're gonna mark a thing there on their on their graph put a waypoint in this one right here don't feel too bad either, y'all. This one, the only chunk, I'm doing a head and a chunk, just fishing these two rods, give them much variety as I can. I think this one here in my hand is gonna be bigger than the last one. And that won't hurt my feelings at all. I, I'll come out here today hoping to catch me a big fish. I always want to catch big fish. I like catching the little ones too. I'm not too particular. But the big ones are definitely more fun. As far, I know somebody will ask me how far I'm running these rigs behind me out here. And the answer today is not very far because the water's calm we're not bouncing around or anything from boat wake or wind so i'm running them fairly close behind me probably i don't know 50 yards maybe yeah that's a better one here he's a better one. Oh, i want you to look at this oh <laughs> we that stinger fly got us one by gosh look at this look where the hook's got him that's why he felt so dang big. I was pulling him in sideways. That stinger hook got him in the back. I bet you he come up after that bait and rolled on it or missed it. And we ended up hooking the daggone thing right there in the back, man. <laughs> Normally, I don't bring in fish that are foul hooked because... I feel like it's rewarding bad behavior, but this in here, I think we're gonna have to, so I don't end up with a hook in me. I'm gonna have to get hold of this in a different way here to get this thing out. Gotta be careful when you're running rigs with multiple hooks in it, you gotta be 
careful with thrashing fish so you don't end up wearing one of them. Yeah, that's, a, that's definitely bigger than the last one. Okay, come on up in here. Boy, this thing. Yeah, dang stingerfly got him, man. Got him right there. Now. He got him in the back. He's like one of them gothic people fish with the piercings all over your daggone body. We'll just go ahead and switch that bait out too when we put it back down. I shouldn't do this. This fish don't deserve it. But you just got you some front camera time even though you're too stupid to eat that bait appropriately. Made his day. That fish right there, he gonna change his life over what I just did for him. He's a better fish now. All right, well, I'm gonna finish doing what I was trying to do when that fish hit and get this head bait on. We'll cut another chunk, put on that rod and put them 50 yards or so behind us and keep making our way out. So this water here is fairly clear and I'm gonna try to get this rig up here so you can see how this thing floats in the water. Okay, so here's my dragging sinker. Now when that's on the bottom, it's gonna be pulling across the bottom. But watch when I lower that sinker down. You see my float right there? It's up off the bottom behind that sinker. And then a few inches below that, maybe you can see there. I don't know if you can or not. Let me see if I can bring it up just a little bit closer to the surface so you can see how this thing runs. So you got the float up, that hook and the bait is a few inches behind the float. So it hangs down just a few inches below the float, but still above the bottom, above the sinker and all that. And then you've got that fly just right there behind that cut bait. So the cut bait's putting off all that scent and oil as you're trolling along, as you're moving along. And you've got that fly that looks like a little bait fish. And you can see how the, I hope you can see how the feathers on that fly there, the hair on it, it kind of like pulses as you're moving through the water. It, it, it looks like a fish that's coming along trying to eat that cut bait. So if a fish, if a catfish comes up, they can just grab the whole deal. They may go for the smaller, what looks like a live bait possibly behind this. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of options, but either way, your cut bait and that fly are still off the bottom as you're moving along. So that's a long winded, a dissertation there, <laughs> explanation. But hopefully y'all can see that on the, on the screen there. Water out here in this particular creek is very clear. So hopefully that showed up. But uh, anyway, enough of this. We gotta do more reeling in by gosh. Fish, oh boy, oh boy, there we go. Oh, he took off with it, man. Oh, when he hit it like a daggone train, wasn't it? Oh man, he's swimming. He's swimming this way too. He's going toward my other line over there. You all need to tell you fish. First off, you need to tell a leaf blower, man, it's too dang early. But then when you're done with that, you tell these fish to swim out that direction, not toward the other line. I got a feeling ain't neither leaf blower man or these fish gonna listen to either one of us. <laughs> they both gonna do what the heck they want. Curious to get him up here. I, I don't know about this one. You know, with with when you're doing this style of fishing, it's best to keep yourself moving forward because otherwise, uh, these kayaks are so lightweight. the The lever, the lever action, basically, of the fish pulling your rod back, you're gonna get spun all around. So because you got to keep your kayak moving forward, you're pulling this fish, not only with your rod, but also with you, your motor up there too. So there's just extra resistance. So it's kind of sometimes hard to gauge exactly how big a fish is until you, until you get them up. It's kind of like when you're fishing, you anchor fishing in current and you're pulling that fish back against the current. It'll make them feel bigger than they are sometimes which ain't the worst thing in the world because <laughs> it's nice. It's nice really than fish that you... Now, sometimes you, you think you got a bit... Like that last one that was foul hooked, I think he's bigger than he is and realize I'm pulling him in sideways. That is a bit of a disappointment. You almost wish the fish would get off of it. Ooh, look right here. There goes another one. We're doubled. 
we're doubled up. I'm gonna focus on this one in the hand. We'll get him up here and take a look at him. And then we'll grab the other one. Yeah, that's a that's a fun size right there. Let me just see. Let me see if he ate the bait or the hook or the fly. Okay, he's ate the bait. Hold on, fish. Uh, is this one? Oh, that one hit it. He hit it and didn't hook up. Okay, let me get our. We need to put this. We need to put this jig up. I ain't seen a daggone thing to throw at it, and it's in the way. Meanwhile, our dragon baits here are working out. Okay, fish, come on in now. Y'all, they getting bigger, by gosh. Further we get out in this creek, the bigger the fish is getting. Let's hold him up there for a leaf blower. I was gonna say before leaf blower man revs up again, but there he goes. Nice, man, they getting bigger, y'all. We, we upgrading, we keep on this pace, we liable to hook a big one. Nice. It was a good time right there. Ate the chunk. I'm gonna stick another one on and just keep the same path going, man. Just unless I could just see a bunch of fish on the graph stacked up, like maybe on a brush or a log or something, and we can just drop baits right on. I'm just gonna keep moving out here. Get on out of here, fish. He out of here, he gone. Alright. Fun times, y'all. It's a good morning. And best of all, these flies, now granted, I know other than the foul hooked fish, the fly, we ain't caught a fish on the fly yet. Just having been eaten anyway. But the encouraging thing is we covered, I don't know if you can see there behind me, I mean, a good ways now in this creek, no snags. So the fly, even as I've come across some rougher stuff, you know, objects and brush and stuff not hooked up so not not snagged up anyway boy the leaf blower man's distracting y'all <laughs> i'm gonna get another bait let's get back to it i believe that one finally got hooked up on that head it's now been hit twice no hookup but this one got it still letting that line there on my other rod we've went through some fish I hope old leaf blower man up there is enjoying the show, by gosh. <laughs> it never fails. He's always chainsaw, leaf blower, lawnmower. Something in every dang on video, man. Now, I'm out here. It ain't like I'm out here on a weekend either, man. I'm out here on a Monday morning filming this. It's me, bass boat man, and leaf blower man. Like, we're the only people out at this air out here <laughs> that's all right though. nobody wants to hear them birds chirp anyway right that's not true i actually enjoy the birds chirping this one here it's going to take a it's going to take an extra second or two to reel this one in i talked there earlier how i was you know i had about maybe maybe 50 yards of line out behind me well I'd let this bait start letting out line and I was filming that other segment there where I was trying to film the the water to show you how that rig runs down there and I'd forgot to flip the bail over on this rod so I ended up having a lot of extra line out on this one. I'll try to do, I need, you know what, hell I, I had that other line running right there while we were reeling in this fish. Y'all need to tap me on the shoulder or holler or something. Tell me flipping bales over. I swear I can't count on you for nothing. And I bet you ain't even gonna land this fish for me either. I'm gonna have to do that my dang self too. Oh, it happened, y'all. Look, look right here. I knew it. I knew it was gonna happen. He got it, buddy. He got the fly. There's our head bait and there's the fly in the mouth. Boy, that makes me so happy, y'all. You just don't know. I love it when a plan comes together, as old Hannibal on the A-Team used to say. Come here, fish. I don't want you throwing that head bait off either while I get hold of you. 
Okay, look at that, man. I knew this had a chance at catching us some fish as long as we wouldn't get snagged. And I talked myself out of doing this for so long because I'm like, oh, it's just going to be one snag after another. It ain't going to be worthwhile. And by gosh, it is. By gosh, it is. You ain't quite big enough to justify front. I ought to give you front camera time just because you ate the fly. But I ain't going to because I want to get that bait back out. You've made me happy though, Fish. You've made me a happy man today as you hit my graph here on the way out 37 feet there where we at right now y'all let's take a look at our head bait before we send it out because it got hit a couple times it's still okay let's rehook it here though okay throw that back out lower it down and man we're back in the game y'all hey atten right there definitely not the biggest fish of the day but fist pump worthy nonetheless because he ate the daggone fly Hannibal, buddy. I love it when a plan comes together. Oh boy. Oh boy, look at that. Oh boy, he's 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 peeling line. Oh man. Oh man, y'all. That was a nice takedown. Nice takedown. I have had a pretty good dry spell here. I think the last fish we got was over there by that house with the blue or navy colored roof over there and i have come up and looped around this bend in the creek so i mean it's it's been a little while Boy, this fish here just nailed it man i'm just you know i you could make an argument that when i got on them fish there well i was getting bit pretty consistently there in that one stretch that I could have just turned around and just went back through that area again, just kept hitting it. But I really wanted to just keep coming out in this creek and, and see what's going on the further we got out here, getting deeper water, get out here, especially to the mouth of this creek. You know, I love fishing creek mouths. Because once fish go back in these creeks, like I said earlier, they can go anywhere. I have no idea where they're gonna go. But to get in and out, they're gonna follow that old creek channel, which means they're going into the old creek mouth when they move out of the main river. And so I love fishing those there. So I wanted to just at least fish my way out to the original creek mouth and see what was going out there, going on out there. And maybe if we saw some fish, maybe sit there a minute and just possibly suspend some baits. There's nothing there. Heck, we may just we'll either make a decision we'll either turn around and come back through this creek again or we'll just keep going and kind of work out in the main channel get out there on the ledge and see what's going on out there but i've at least been encouraged thus far two things i've been encouraged that the flies ain't got snagged but also too just the number of fish caught so far started out slow farther back in this creek there really wasn't nothing going on but as we've made our way out to the 30 plus foot depths there's been a lot more action every time i'm pulling up a fish now i'm like did he eat the, the cut bait or did he eat the fly oh man this thing this nears i feel him rolling he's a blue that's another thing oh i should have mentioned earlier too with wanting to do this fly rig i'll tell you here in a minute don't let me forget we'll get this thing up here come here fish he's trying everything in the world to get away from me he does not want to be on this camera that's a pretty good blue right there let's see what he's got i think he's got the head bait yeah he's got the head yeah it's another quality fish i knew when that you you get a takedown like that with that much line peeling like you know you've got you a decent fish come here fishy that's a that's a good one right there that's a, oh hey 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 now indoor behavior now i guess he's done got some grass around that bait there he he likes a little salad with his steak don't we all fish 
let's hold that one up. That one right there may be the biggest one of the morning right there, buddy. That's a good fish, man. Heck, if I take down two, wasn't it? Nice. Yeah, 37 feet here. Just rounded this bend in this creek and really getting out here closer to the entrance of the old creek that was here before they made the reservoir. And so I definitely just want to fish out there to the to the entrance of it. What do you think, fish? You ready to go home? He said he never wanted to leave. He was just looking for breakfast. <laughs> We'll see you, buddy. All right. Let's take a look at this bait. Depending on how it looks, we may switch it out. And then I'll tell you what I was wanting to do. Another reason I was wanting to try out these fly rigs. Let's take a look at this first. I'm gonna switch it out. It's looking, it's looking okay, but again, with us only fishing with two baits today, I wanna We'll make sure we got the freshest bait possible out there. Oh, buddy, we got one on right here now. I'm trying to get the other bait. I ain't cut the bait yet. And we got another one. We just went through some more. When you get rods going down this quick, you've gone through a little school or a pod, whatever you want to call it, a fish. You see that oftentimes, they'll kind of travel in packs it's not always big schools, you know, you're not going to necessarily see 30, 50 fish or anything, but they might be in a cluster of, of four, six fish. That's why I like, you know, when I'm suspending baits, oftentimes they'll have four rods and not uncommon at all for you to have two, three, all four rods go down at the same time sometimes. Boy, it's fun when that happens too. This one here in my hand. I can tell you probably ain't gonna be as big as that other one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get him up here close to the kayak. We'll get a look at him. I'm gonna cut this other bait and we'll, we'll have the other line going out while we land this one. And then maybe I'll finally get around and tell you that story. These fish keep interrupting me here. Yeah, be just a little old thing. Tell you what fish i should be able to get rid of you quick here so let's just let's just do that let's just get him going quick there he is i think that's the smallest one of the day so far well he's knocked my he knocked my line my float my rattle up the line a little bit there okay let's cut these baits right quick and i'm gonna tell you something i'm hoping to do with these fly rigs so one of the drawbacks i feel like of dragging baits versus suspending them or uh, casting baits out and letting them sit on bottom one of the drawbacks i feel like is that you just don't catch as many flatheads dragging as you do with other techniques why is that i don't know but you just you just don't when i've dragged in the past and yeah you get a flathead occasionally but it's kind of the exception not the rule whereas when i'm just suspending baits or if i'm setting up on anchor spots and casting lines out you get flatheads a lot more frequently so one of the things i was hoping is that with these flies and they're kind of imitating a you know another a bait fish that's actually swimming along behind the cut bait i was hoping it might attract some flatheads and these these flies of course have a, a j hook versus the circle hooks that i use for the cut bait and i'm hoping that maybe that'll help you get get a flathead hooked up and keep him hooked up because here's here's one of my thoughts on this and i'll give you this theory as we get this other bait out what if when we're dragging what if we are getting flathead bites because i mean you think about it flatheads are a very aggressive predator fish right like they're you know they eat a they're up hunting baits 
oftentimes. And you, I've, you know, I've got bass fishing friends that that every year, I mean, I get pictures, right? They're out there bass fishing. They throw crankbaits, uh, chatterbaits, whatever, and they send me a picture of a flathead that they've, they've caught accidental, you know, a bycatch for them while they're they're chasing their, their bass fish, right? And so it's like, you would think, you would think that when we're dragging along and we're creating a presentation that's actively moving, that it would trigger that instinct in a flathead and, and just predator, predator prey, and you would get reaction strikes from them. But again, I mean, you just, for whatever reason, you just don't, I don't anyway catch many flatheads while dragging. But here's my thought on it as the bass boat goes by. What if we are? Oftentimes, when I'm suspending baits, and you regular viewers, you've seen this happen, I'll be out on the area, I'll be suspending baits, flathead will hit, you feel that thump, and he just sits there. You'll have weight on your rod tip, and your rod tip will just be kind of wavering. That flathead, he's ate that bait, it's in his mouth. He's not running with it though. He's just holding it there. And eventually you set it long enough, he'll he'll take off and that'll load up the rod or you you know set the hook on him and get him that way. Or sometimes he just lets go. What if these flatheads, they're eating these dragon baits and we don't even know they're on? Because with that much line out behind you, you're not necessarily gonna feel that thump when they inhale that bait. And as far as your rod tip, like having a little weight on it, like if they're matching your speed moving along, your rod tip, you move all the time when you're dragging baits because you're coming across rocks and, you know, muscle beds and rough bottom down there. So your rod tips are constantly moving as your, as your sinker kind of catches and meets resistance on there. So it's possible we could be getting bit by flatheads all the daggone time while you're dragging and you just don't know. And they eventually just realize that something's up, something's not right, and they spit that bait and they never really got hooked. And so what I'm hoping is maybe with these flies, with it kind of swimming behind the cut bait, you know, hopefully imitating like an actual live bait fish, that maybe they're gonna hit it a little harder, more aggressively, get that J hook, and maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll get more flatheads with this than just dragging a piece of cut bait alone. So that, that was one of the things I was thinking about because I, I was just, in my mind, I'm like, it just don't make no damn sense why, why you just don't get as many flatheads dragging as you do with these other techniques when they are such a more aggressive, I mean, blues, don't get me wrong, blues are a predator fish too. I mean, they're actively chasing fish oftentimes, but they're also opportunistic. You know, they're way more likely to, I, I'll listen, all my flathead, my biggest flatheads have come on cut bait, but blues are far more opportunistic. They're going to take that cut bait a lot more frequently, a lot more often than the flatheads are. So this, this technique, I mean, it, it just seems like you, you should be getting that predator prey that reaction strike it for whatever reason for me it just hasn't worked out that way so curious to see now that i know i can run these flies on the dragging rigs i'm curious to see as time goes on if i don't pick up a few more flatheads doing this another one we ride out here now we ride out here now by this old where this old creek dumped in i'll take a camera here and show you in just a second where I'm at on the map. But you can see we're a long ways from the land up here, but before they made the reservoir, this old creek channel, it was much, you can see a wide desert, it was much more narrow and circled out through here. And so I've just been following that old creek bed all the way out. And, you know, we had another little dry spell here just no pecs no taps nothing but getting out here now where it starts to drop off it's actually dropping off as i as i talk to you and reel this fish in we'll get him up here and i'll show you right quick on the map before we go completely over it I, it's another blue i ain't seen him yet but i feel him rolling around every which way come up here and show yourself fish you whooped now. Might as well give it up. 
Yeah, another smaller, smaller class blue right there. Let me take that camera here and show you. So here we are on the, on the contour map. This old creek channel here in blue circled around, come out. Now we're going off the drop. It was about 40 feet here at the top of the drop at the, at the old creek mouth. And now we've come off here. We're going to drop off to about 60 plus. So I'm not really seeing anything on the, on the screen there on the graph as we're going off. So I think what I'm probably going to do is turn and we'll just work up this ledge here into the upstream into the current. Actually, we're going to get snagged apparently before we do that. I'm talking to you. We got our first snag of the day. Perfect timing. See if we can get this thing. We may have to go back for this one. That ain't gonna come free. I'll let that and get too snagged. Sometimes if you see them about to snag, you can give yourself some slack and lift straight up. That ain't gonna work out. So I'll tell you what let's do. Let's uh Let's get this fish landed and then I'm gonna make a sharp, that's perfect anyway, cause I'm gonna make a reset everything. We'll make a sharp turn and we'll go right up this ledge here and just uh, cover it. Get out here in the main river channel, see what's going on here for a little while, get into some deeper depths. See, maybe we might get on some better quality fish. Well, there is old blue kitty. Now let's go over here and get our snagging done. There it come. Had to go back for it, but didn't have to, to break off, which is always nice. Usually, rarely break off on these rigs. Usually, when you get to a point that you have to, I'm gonna switch these baits out before we turn and go up the ledge here, but usually when you have to break off when you're dragging, it ain't your sinker that's hung it's usually a hook you've come across some wood some brush and you've stuck one of them hooks into a branch that's usually what gets you but anyway we just go over here work our way out go up this ledge and uh we'll work out here and deeper water a little bit for the rest of the time i'm probably going to fish another hour or so before i call a day and go get some lunch but hopefully we'll hook into some more maybe a big one out here on this main channel Got one. Got one 60 feet deep right here. Just got out here, started working up this ledge, and uh, y'all looked around on the live scope there at the top of the drop there and along the bottom of it. And you know, that's the type of place that I like to put time into. Just set up, suspend baits on, wait on fish to move in and out of. But, Right now, there just wasn't anything there. But apparently there was one nearby because he just come and got this bait. I don't know. This one's kind of hard to judge right now. I don't think he's going to be no, he ain't going to be no golly whopper. But he may end up being a fun sizer. Well, he just took off then, didn't he? Some of these fish got a bad attitude, folks. They woke up on the wrong side of the bed. They got a cow lick in their hair. And when they ought to be grateful to even have hair, some of us don't. But this fish, man, he's gonna take it out on me. I didn't do a dang thing to this fish. Cause him to have a bad day, but he's taking it out on me regardless. He's pulling now, man. Goodness, it may end up being bigger than I thought. It's like a Christmas present from one of your friends at work. You just don't know what they're gonna give you. Oh, was it? What was it you used to do? The mystery gift or the something Santa Claus? I, hell, I don't know. I ain't, I ain't worked a real job in so long, I don't even remember. You know what I'm trying to say, though. Come on, fish. Yeah, that's better than I thought he was. 
That's a, that's a much better fish than I thought. Come over here. You're going to come this way. And you're going to come in here and act like somebody fish. Yeah, that's, that's a nice one right there, folks. 60 feet deep out here. Just got started working up the edge of the channel here. I might give you some front camera time, fish. What do you think about that? This is it. Well, Lord, get it out, fish. Slow as we brought you up, you should have done done that. He's gonna tell us about it now. Give me them pliers. You ain't gonna give me that hook back. I'll take it back the, the easy way. There we go. Hey, how about that, y'all? That's another pretty good fish. Be honest with you, much bigger than I thought he was. Uh, I didn't. He just kind of he picked up the fight there at the end. But yeah, yeah, that's a that's a quality fish right there. Man, it's been a productive morning overall. I mean, we've had some dry spells in this creek coming out. You know, we hit some just dead zones. But just you keep covering water, you just run into some fish and got us another one right here. I'll tell you what, y'all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go home happy today when I leave because get out of here, fish. Because, you know, not only getting some fish and getting some decent quality fish too, but this rig is working out. You know, we've only got one, well, two technically, one that ate the fly and then one that snagged you know that we wouldn't have got otherwise because because you know he would have just rolled on that bait and, and not got hooked up but the uh rig itself well, i've got my dang line every time i talk to the camera i got something going on i got the dang line wrapped around my rod holder but uh the rig itself's working out i mean other than that one snag back here which i got free which had nothing to do with the fly no issues at all pulling these the flies and that extra exposed hook through here so i'm gonna go home happy today y'all i'm real encouraged but i'm gonna try to get me some more before i do got one after the head bait he's got it too by gosh he didn't hit it super aggressively but he hit it nonetheless and he's either got the bait or the fly Get another one here. I wasn't sure if we was going to or not. I've just been making my way up river here. And it just, it, I don't know. It's just, we've had another little dry spill here. But you just keep your baits where they need to be. I'm working right on the, right on the edge over here to contour. It's kind of what these fish, as they move along, that's what they're going to follow. When you cover enough distance, you'll run into some fish. Oh, oh, oh. oh okay. I, I'm imagining things. I thought my other rod was getting hit over there. If there's three people still watching this video right now, I bet you one of you has got excited thinking I had no fish on probably wasn't as excited as I was about it, but three people left might be in a, that might be optimistic. <laughs> this is probably going to be a pretty long video with the number of fish that we got out here this morning. Yeah, I mean, numbers wise, it's been, oh no. Let's see what the malfunction with this fish is. Let's see. Let's see how he's done it. I, I don't even... I don't even know how this fish has done this. He's not, he's not foul hooked at all. Look at this, this silly fish, he's lassoed himself. Here's my hook around. Yeah, he's lassoed himself around the dang tail. He was down there hitting that bait. Okay, now you, you done it that time, didn't you, fish? You got the fly in the side of you then. Lord. I don't know. Some of these fish, they're so dang... I don't know how they survive in life to live as long as they have, being as dumb as they are. You didn't knock that bait off, though. Goodness gracious, I'll tell you something, folks. Uh, 
the silliness never ceases to amaze me. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let that bait right there out. And uh, I think my plan right now, y'all, yeah, I'm just, I'm making my way up river here. You can kind of see I'm right on the edge of the contour here, right on the edge of the channel, right where it starts to come up over here, 54 feet, but I'm, I'm just moving along. But I think what I'm going to do is fish till I get up there about the, where that next, I don't know if it's an island or just part of the land or whatever you see it up there. You know what I'm talking about. I'm going to fish till about up there and I'll bring my baits up just past that area. And I think I'm going to call it a morning out here and go get me some lunch. So I'll probably just uh, call this the close of the video here. It's a good time to end on that fish. And um, if we get any more between here and there, we'll throw it on here as a bonus fish. If not, me and these geese over here that won't shut the heck up when I'm trying to talk. I tell you, man, leaf blower, man. Gee, it's, I mean, <laughs> it's so many distractions. It's a wonder I get any words out. But anyway, me and the geese will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.